Owls are birds from the order Strigiformes, which includes over 200 species of mostly solitary and nocturnal birds of prey typified by an upright stance, a large, broad head, binocular vision, binaural hearing, sharp talons, and feathers adapted for silent flight. Exceptions include the diurnal northern hawk owl and the gregarious burrowing owl. Owls hunt mostly small mammals, insects, and other birds, although a few species specialize in hunting fish. They are found in all regions of the earth except the polar ice caps and some remote islands. Owls are divided into two families, the true owl family, Strigae, and the barn owl family, Titanidae. A group of owls is called a parliament. Anatomy owls possess large, forward-facing eyes and near holes, a hawk-like beak, a flat face, and usually a conspicuous circle of feathers, a facial disc, around each eye. The feathers making up this disc can be adjusted to sharply focus sounds from varying distances onto the owl's asymmetrically placed ear cavities. Most birds of prey have eyes on the sides of their heads, but the stereoscopic nature of the owl's forward-facing eyes permits the greater sense of depth perception necessary for low-light hunting. Although owls have binocular vision, their large eyes are fixed in their sockets, as are those of most other birds, so they must turn their entire heads to change views. As owls are far-sighted, they are unable to clearly see anything within a few centimeters of their eyes. Caught prey can be felt by owls with the use of file plumes, hair-like feathers on the beak and feet that act as fillers. Their far vision, particularly in low light, is exceptionally good. Owls can rotate their heads and necks as much as 270 degrees. Owls have 14 neck vertebrae compared to 7 in humans, which makes their necks more flexible. They also have adaptations to their circulatory systems, permitting rotation without cutting off blood to the brain. The foramina in their vertebrae through which the vertebral arteries pass are about 10 times the diameter of the artery, instead of about the same size as the artery as in humans. The vertebral arteries enter the cervical vertebrae higher than in other birds, giving the vessels some slack, and the carotid arteries unite in a very large anastomosis or junction, the largest of any birds, preventing blood supply from being cut off while they rotate their necks. Other anastomoses between the carotid and vertebral arteries support this effect. The smallest owl, weighing as little as 31 grams and measuring some 13.5 centimeters. Different species of owls produce different sounds, this distribution of calls aids owls in finding mates or announcing their presence to potential competitors, and also aids ornithologists and birders in locating these birds and distinguishing species. As noted above, their facial discs help owls to fill the sound of prey to their ears. In many species, these discs are placed asymmetrically, for better directional location, owl plumage is generally cryptic, although several species have facial and head markings, including face masks, ear tufts, and brightly colored irises. These markings are generally more common in species inhabiting open habitats, and are thought to be used in signaling with other owls in low light conditions. Hunting Adaptations All owls are carnivorous birds of prey and live on diets of insects, small rodents and logomorphs. Some owls are also specifically adapted to hunt fish. They are very adept in hunting in their respective environments. 
Since owls can be found in nearly all parts of the world across a multitude of ecosystems, their hunting skills and characteristics vary slightly from species to species, though most characteristics are shared among all species. Flight and feathers. Most owls share an innate ability to fly almost silently and also more slowly in comparison to other birds of prey. Most owls live a mainly nocturnal lifestyle and being able to fly without making any noise gives them a strong advantage over prey alert to the slightest sound in the night. A silent, slow flight is not as necessary for diurnal and crepuscular owls given that prey can usually see an owl approaching. Owls' feathers are generally larger than the average bird's feathers have fewer radiates, longer pendulum, and achieve smooth edges with different rachis structures. Serrated edges along the owl's remiges bring the flapping of the wing down to a nearly silent mechanism. The serrations are more likely reducing aerodynamic disturbances, rather than simply reducing noise. The surface of the flight feathers is covered with a velvety structure that absorbs the sound of the wing moving. These unique structures reduce noise frequencies above 2 kHz, making the sound level emitted drop below the typical hearing spectrum of the owl's usual prey and also within the owl's own best hearing range. This optimizes the owl's ability to silently fly to capture prey without the prey hearing the owl first as it flies, and to hear any noise the prey makes. It also allows the owl to monitor the sound output from its flight pattern. The feather adaption that allows silent flight means that barn owl feathers are not waterproof. To retain the softness and silent flight, the barn owl cannot use the preen oil or powder dust that other species use for waterproofing. In wet weather, they cannot hunt and this may be disastrous during the breeding season. Barn owls are frequently found drowned in livestock drinking troughs, since they land to drink and bathe, but are unable to climb out. Owls can struggle to keep warm because of their lack of waterproofing so large numbers of downy feathers help them to retain body heat vision eyesight is a particular characteristic of the owl that aids in nocturnal prey capture owls are part of a small group of birds that live nocturnally but do not use echolocation to guide them in flight in low light situations Owls are known for their disproportionately large eyes in comparison to their skulls. An apparent consequence of the evolution of an absolutely large eye and a relatively small skull is that the eye of the owl has become tubular in shape. This shape is found in other so-called nocturnal eyes, such as the eyes of strepsirine primates and bathypelagic fishes. Since the eyes are fixed in sclerotic tubes, they are unable to move the eyes in any direction. Instead of moving their eyes, owls swivel their heads to view their surroundings. Owls heads are capable of swiveling through an angle of roughly 270 degrees, easily enabling them to see behind them without relocating the torso. This ability keeps bodily movement at a minimum thus reduces the amount of sound the owl makes as it waits for its prey. Owls are regarded as having the most frontally placed eyes among all avian groups, which gives them some of the largest binocular fields of vision. Owls are far-sighted and cannot focus on objects within a few centimeters of their eyes. These mechanisms are only able to function due to the large-sized retinal image. Thus, the primary nocturnal function in the vision of the owl is due to its large posterior nodal distance, 
Retinal image brightness is only maximized to the owl within secondary functions. These attributes of the owl cause its nocturnal eyesight to be far superior to that of its average prey. Hearing owls exhibit specialized hearing functions and ear shapes that also aid in hunting. They are noted for asymmetrical ear placements on the skull in some genera. Owls can have either internal or external ears, both of which are asymmetrical. Asymmetry has not been reported to extend to the middle or internal ear of the owl. Asymmetrical ear placement on the skull allows the owl to pinpoint the location of its prey. This is especially true for strictly nocturnal species such as the barn owls Tido or Tank Mom's owl. With ears set at different places on its skull, an owl is able to determine the direction from which the sound is coming by the minute difference in time that it takes for the sound waves to penetrate the left and right ears. The owl turns its head until the sound reaches both ears at the same time at which point it is directly facing the source of the sound. This time difference between ears is about 30 microseconds. Behind the ear openings are modified, dense feathers, densely packed to form a facial ruff, which creates an anterior facing, concave wall that cups the sound into the ear structure. This facial ruff is poorly defined in some species, and prominent, nearly encircling the face, in other species. The facial disc also acts to direct sound into the ears, and a downward facing, sharply triangular beak minimizes sound reflection away from the face. The shape of the facial disc is adjustable at will to focus sounds more effectively. The prominences above the great horned owl's head are commonly mistaken as its ears. This is not the case, they are merely feather tufts. Beak The beak of the owl is short, curved, and downward facing, and typically hooked at the tip for gripping and tearing its prey. Once prey is captured, the scissor motion of the top and lower bill is used to tear the tissue and kill. The sharp lower edge of the upper bill works in coordination with the sharp upper edge of the lower bill to deliver this motion. The downward facing beak allows the owl's field vision to be clear, as well as directing sound into the ears without deflecting sound waves away from the face. Symbolism and Mythology African cultures among the Kikuyu of Kenya, it was believed that owls were harbingers of death. If one saw an owl or heard its hoot, someone was going to die. In general, owls are viewed as harbingers of bad luck, ill health, or death. The belief is widespread even today. Asia and Mongolia the owl is regarded as a benign omen. In one story, Genghis Khan was hiding from enemies in a small coppice when an owl roosted in the tree above him, which caused his pursuers to think no man could be hidden there. In modern Japan, owls are regarded as lucky and are carried in the form of a talisman or charm. Sumerian and ancient Semitic cultures in Sumerian, Akkadian, and Babylonian culture, the owl was associated with Lilith. 50. This association also occurs in the Bible, in some translations, in Isaiah 34 14. Rodent control encouraging natural predators to control rodent population is a natural form of pest control, along with excluding food sources for rodents. Placing a nest box for owls on a property can help control rodent populations. One family of hungry barn owls can consume more than 3,000 rodents in a nesting season while maintaining the naturally balanced food chain. Attacks on humans Although humans and owls frequently live together in harmony, 
There have been incidents when owls have attacked humans. For example, in January 2013, a man from Inverness, Scotland suffered heavy bleeding and went into shock after being attacked by an owl. The photographer Eric Hosking lost his left eye after attempting to photograph a tawny owl, which inspired the title of his 1970 autobiography.